off in a closet today. <laughs> Grand Central Station at my house. All right. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We are on the weekly Women GMO Free News Show. It is Memorial Day on a Monday. This is a very special broadcast coming to you from all across America and all around the world. We have some special guests today. Our guest of honor is Tammy Canal Monroe. Wave to everybody, Tammy. Hi. <laughs> yeah, she is the creator and originator of the March Against Monsanto. It has been a historic, thrilling, fantastic, amazing, phenomenal uh, weekend. Saturday, March Against Monsanto had, why don't you tell us how many cities and how many marchers, Tammy? Uh, we had 52 countries participate with uh, 436 cities and over 2 million people. It's incredible. Wow! Woo! Can somebody do applause <laughs> effects here? Yeah! <laughs> Fantastic! And we have some other. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, we're so thrilled. This is really a phenomenal, phenomenal event that happened. I know ours was phenomenal. We have some other very special. We have another very special guest, Henry Rollins. Please wave to everybody and say hello. Where are you coming to us from? No sound. <coughs> no, not yet. Now there should be sound. From the middle of there Bulgaria. Hello, everyone. Oh, from Bulgaria. Thank you, Henry, for being in our time zone. Appreciate that. What time is it there? No problem at all. It's about 8 o'clock 8 o'clock at night. OK, all right. OK, great. And, and Andy, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm one of our hosts. I'm from Eastern Washington, and Tammy, I am so happy to talk to you today. Um, we had a great march here. They expected we expected about 200, and over 700 showed. Yay! Awesome. Yeah. yeah. There were a lot of people from out of town who signed up. So, but I think the word kind of just went like wildfire at the la you know the last couple days. Word was really getting out. Yeah, we had a lot of criticism at first because we did do a Memorial Day, but our whole thinking behind that was if you're not able to make it in your town, hopefully there'd be so many of them that you'd be able to do, you know, a destination somewhere. So Actually, it worked out well. It happened. Yeah, we yes. had quite a few people that were from out of town that were visiting that came. They said we were going to miss us for anything, and they were so happy there was one in Spokane. A lot of people who had actually delayed their trip, their weekend plans, by one day just so that they could participate in the march. And the two co the two co-leaders here were um, John Crowfoot and mm -hmm. Jace Defati, and they did a super job, just a great job. It, we it had was, a really we had a great team just across the board. All the organizers really stepped up, and a lot of them have that was their first time ever organizing anything. Yes, and everyone did amazing. Fantastic. Okay, so Rachel from Arizona. Yeah. Okay. So Arizona, our march was huge. We had no idea what to expect because um, Phoenix is, I would say marches are probably not something that you would have expected um, to have happen here. And I thought maybe we'd have a few hundred people. And we had about a thousand people on the march and about 2,000 people at the rally. And so for us, this was a huge public statement and probably one of the first and biggest statements in our state. So we were super excited to come on board and help the organizers out with the event and um, thank you so much because I think you're propelling the movement in our state for sure with the March Against Monsanto. In a huge way and we saw that Arizona Tucson got, um, got news coverage too. We saw you in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, and we're working on a few other news pieces that um, we weren't able to acquire that um, happened and, and went li were live, and so we're trying to track down those folks to um, post it up as soon as we can. But yeah, we, we did get press coverage, um, even though there were um, fake, uh, fake press releases that had the wrong time and all oh, kinds wow. of, yeah, mm -hmm. it was really funny in our town what happened. Wow. So, but irrespective, it still it still went off amazingly well, and we still had press coverage. So, yeah, fantastic. And I was in Laguna Beach here in Orange County, and we had for sure at least 600 marchers. But for Moms Across America, we passed out flyers for the you know upcoming event, and we passed out a thousand flyers, no problem. So we know there are a lot of people there, and the word is getting out. We it was just we were coming 
down the street and approaching the, the beach and the whole front of the beach was just covered with people. I just wanted to cry. It was so beautiful. I did cry. Working, I lost yeah, it. <laughs> it was so beautiful. You know, because working on Prop 37, we would go out to honking waves and there'd be maybe 20 people there. Mm -hmm. And to finally see, you know, 600 people and just to be marching and chanting with people from all different races and backgrounds and ages and shapes and sizes and ages and everything. It was just so empowering and so exciting. And people just didn't want to stop, you know. Even during the speeches, they were just like, no, we got to get people to honk and wave, you know. So there were a lot of people that were by the road and getting people to honk and wave and rallying. It was just, it was so thrilling. We really thank you, Tammy, for all of your late night efforts for all of your time on Facebook and computers and figuring things out that you've never figured out before and working with people from all across the country and we really also want to thank your husband and your family for their generosity in sharing you and your time. So oh, will you so sweet. Will you please give them all a hug from us and yes. thank them from the bottom of we our hearts for their generosity in sharing you with us. And I just want to say this was very much a collective effort. I could not have done this myself. And, you know, from the international organizers I had helping me to, you know, the local organizers in the smallest towns, I mean, it was definitely a very, very much a group effort. So I can't take all the credit. So, sure. And I want well, to say, say thank you too for making it. Come on in here. This is my youngest daughter, Sydney, for making it a family hi. friendly event. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and for, for keeping the vibe very peaceful and mellow. We so appreciate that. And um, even though there were people from all sides of the conversation coming in, I mean, we had the young Occupy folks, the Anarchy folks, the Agenda 21 folks. We had the, you know, the moms groups. And it just, even though it had all of those different voices, it still remained extremely peaceful and extremely well. Um, organized and and it was great for even the smallest of children. So thank you. It was. Yeah. That was our attention. And it that was, was also, really it was great. Also, it was also massive in Europe. I know um, yes. the one of our neighbors in in uh, in Vienna in Austria. There was a huge march. I think one of the biggest in the world. I'm not quite sure. Okay. He would, uh, the leader there actually was one of our international organizers, and he was really uh, instrumental in the global success. His name is Clemens Partisan, and he's actually with um, like a digital anarchy group. And we also got a lot of flack for working with anarchists, but you know, they they promised to remain peaceful, and I didn't want to be um, exclusive because I really feel this is such an issue that affects everyone. And I think that's kind of the beauty behind the success is because we did welcome everyone from all walks of life. We didn't care about your political background. We didn't, you know, we didn't care about your religion, your ethnicity. If you were willing to stand up for a cause that's important to every single one of us, we welcomed you. Fantastic. Great. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of the other team members that helped you organize the march? Uh, yeah, uh, Clemens and his group was definitely, like I said, instrumental in the you know European um, success. And then I was also working with Emily Renzik, who is um, a freelance um, journalist out of Seattle, and then Nick Burnaby, who is um, an activist in San Diego. And we were pretty much the core group that um, made it happen. <laughs> wow, yeah, just the, the power of the few, right? Mm -hmm. It just becomes the mighty. Yes. Really, really amazing. And hats off to all of you for I know you stayed up late nights and yeah. worked really hard on this. Thank you for all your efforts. So how do you feel now? I mean, did, did this, was this just beyond your wildest imagination? Absolutely. Um, when I created the page, I told my husband, if I could get 3,000 people, I will consider that a success. And that was kind of my number. And yeah. I mean, it just exploded. And it's so inspiring to see all these people that care, you know, because it, it is truly the issue of our time. And were you thinking at the time 3,000 people um, locally, like nationally, or were you thinking globally? Like nationally, and I'm new to Utah, so I didn't really know how the activist scene worked out here, and I honestly thought I would probably be standing on my, my capital with, you know, maybe my daughter and, uh, you know, a couple <laughs> other people. And yeah. we had actually over 2,000 people here in my, my town, so it was, yeah. It was incredible. Our march spanned six city blocks. It was it was incredible. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's so great. So, um, okay, so let's see. So you just told us what you did on Saturday. That sounds fantastic. So what were some of the highlights for you around the world? What were some of your favorite 
You know, um, Amsterdam, they look like they had probably 10,000 people in the pictures I've seen. Um, oh, the the wow. South African groups were wonderful. You know, they came out in, you know, their traditional costumes and just seeing everybody kind of put their own flair on it was just remarkable. The, the Hawaiian events were beautiful. Um, I mean, I don't really have a favorite. I, I, just looking through all the photos, I, I'm just so proud of, you know, the work that I've done and that everybody did. And, and the fact that it remained peaceful is something definitely to commend when you have that many people. So, Yeah, it's fantastic. I loved how creative people got. I saw the one where they did the bee die-in. I was loved that. That was uh, They did one in Milwaukee, and then they did one um, in D.C. in front of Monsanto headquarters, which is priceless. Wow. <laughs> so great. They were just to see grown men walking around in giant bee costumes <laughs> was so fun. You know, my kids, we were watching that. We got onto, um, we put our flat screen, we put YouTube up on our flat screen, you know, in our, in our home. So we could go through the computer and YouTube on, the, on our TV. And the kids were just watching and saying, like, there's a guy in a bee costume. <laughs> but they know why, you know, they know why. And we were all, you know, together on this weekend, our whole family and friends. And I was seeing people from different walks of life that I didn't know cared about this, you know, mm -hmm. at Laguna Beach coming up and hugging each other. And I posted one of the pictures of one of our organizers hugging somebody else and saying, you know, this is the kind of connection and unity that is coming out of this movement so Monsanto doesn't know it, but in a way we really have to thank them for bringing together yeah. just people from all around the world in unity and strength and empowerment. It's just such a beautiful thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. many so many events in our town are going to be spawned from this. So you've you ignited something, you know. Yeah, um, Tammy. So thank you for that. And I'll tell you, we're already planning next year, even bigger. Uh, we've we've blow, we blew out the venue we had this time around with ten days' notice. Awesome. And yeah, and I I can't even imagine what next year is going to be like. I think we'll have to expand it to multiple cities within, uh, or w multiple areas within the city in order to be able to maintain. But we we had veterans from. Um, Veterans for Peace come out and talk about um, how GMOs have, or how uh, Agent Orange has in fact uh, affected the veterans, mm -hmm. and I thought that was kind of a nice touch for um, our our Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And we had folks from the um, the Indian reservations and from the Indigenous peoples communities come out and talk about how this has impacted them and how they feel they've been targeted. And we had um, moms groups come out. We had people from vegetarian groups and vegan groups. We had people who had concerns about animals and pets and the environment. It really was a great way to congeal a lot of different aspects of this uh, movement into one great rally. So thank you. Yeah, I think that um, it will be even bigger to do it again next year. A lot of people felt like we didn't know about this. I, we didn't know about this. We would have joined if we had known. Yeah. So it's definitely adds added some momentum to well, this. Well, we already have May twenty fourth on the books for next year. So, um, but I also um, am trying to get everybody to rally again um, around October twelfth, which is um, a few days before World Food Day. It happens to fall on a Saturday. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. World Food Day falls on a Wednesday, so we want to do it on a Saturday because that seems universally a really good day for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, sorry, what's the date? October twelfth. And October, is, and October is also GMO um, Awareness Month, which I'm sure you all know. So I feel like that would be really poetic to do another big event. Yeah. Well, you um, know, uh, Ben has mar ma the March. When is your March? So July 4th. Zen. Yes. Yes, July 4th. All, all across America. And, you know, some people have said, oh, maybe we'll do something in Australia, maybe Canada. So who knows if they would like to, you know, March in Solidarity Moms, that would be fantastic. And we're just joining into Fourth of July parades, and many of them you don't need applications; you just show up, and so it's very easy. All the permits, the porta potties, the police—they're already taken care of. You know, you just get a get a Moms Across America T-shirt, grab some balloons, your kids a tricycle, and get out there. And we're going to have flyers. I'm getting them made up now. Um, the the some the the parades may have to chip in for the flyers. We, it just depends on how many parades we have. We only have a certain amount of funds that we've raised so far. But um, we're going to be getting out flyers to thousands of people locally about GMOs. What is a GMO? Why should I care about it? We're going to have quotes from moms about how their kids have gotten better 
going GMO free. And then on the back side of the flyer, we're going to have GMO free solutions. So body care and um, you know products are mom approved favorite products. And so we're going to make it easier for you to go GMO free. And we're going to get the information out to thousands locally and millions nationally and maybe even globally. So we're very excited about that. This this morning I woke up to three pages of RSVPs. So it's happening. It's moving. Thank you so much, Tammy, for rallying the March Against Monsanto people. It's very exciting. We got to stick together. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So what else? So let's see. What other questions? If somebody else has any questions, please let me know. I'd just, but I have I'd just like to, to um, hear about the media coverage because it was really interesting. Lots of, mm. lots of media that hasn't actually picked up a lot of stories about GMOs in the past actually picked up on this more than anything else. And especially, especially Russia Today's coverage, which was yeah. massive all over the world. Um, they, they've been wonderful. Oh, they've, been, they've been wonderful for years, but, but um, I, I wondered if you'd actually done any personal interviews with them at all, because they're, they're a great bunch. And they, they had it on, I think they had it on 24-7, didn't they, the whole, the whole month? <laughs> they did, they did. They were like streaming live. It was crazy. Um, I personally didn't do an interview with them, but um, Nick Burnaby, the San Diego-based guy, he actually went on and did uh, two different ones. Um, so that was great. And um, as far as mainstream media, no, they're pretty much ignoring us, which is kind of shocking. Like over here in the States, like CNN, Fox News, I mean, we haven't even had a mention across the ticker tape. So um, that's fine. You know, a lot of local media did show up, although there were some events that didn't have a single reporter, which is just, I mean, it kind of shows you the state of the country when they'd rather report about Jody Arias than anything significant going on. So. I actually, I actually rang up the the BBC in London to one journalist I know there, and uh, they'd they'd apparently been stopped from reporting on it. So there's really, there's also some really, from, mm -hmm. there was there was no coverage on the BBC at all, which is uh, quite incredible. Oh, it's shocking. It is yeah, shocking I, for an event this large and international on any other subject. That is absolutely that is a shocking. Well, and if it hadn't remained peaceful, they would have been covering it. If there was oh. rioting or violence, they would have been all over it, shedding all the negative light that they could have on it. So, yeah. yeah. And I have to tell you, the camera people um, that we got out were all over this issue. They found it super important, and the I will say some of the anchors didn't even know what we were talking about, and they really came out trying to do the angle on the, making it a fringe movement. And when we saw what was going on, we had some people jump in and put some of the speakers on as as um, doing the interviews, which was so genius because really they were there to show the kind of like anarchist side of it, which is cool, but the rest of the world might look at that in a way that's not very flattering for an intelligent movement that really wants to seek healthy alternatives for people. So. So, um, yeah, it was interesting. We also were told, like, listen, keep your press releases down to one page. Uh, make sure you have a contact person on your press release on the top of the page. Make sure you're very clear and succinct about where you are, when you are. And when you send your press releases out, you have to follow them up with phone calls. And even with all of that, we did only receive a small amount of media coverage. And, um, but we were glad to have it, and it was just local coverage. I think, so for I think next year, we've got a whole plan. We've got a whole plan coming out. But yeah, they, they can't ignore it. But follow the money trail. I mean, when you look at the sponsors, it's even for BBC World News, which comes on, they're, they're touting uh, genetic engineering of sugarcane for ethanol production. Sure, That's sure. the Shell Gasoline's their sponsor, you know. BASF. What can we do? I think, I think the most important thing about the whole march was it is now turned everything into a worldwide movement instead of yes. lots of little groups. Because... Yep. Uh, for the last 10 years, we've been working as little groups fighting little battles, but now now people are starting to contact each other, and not just through the march. I mean, the march the march has joined people together, but, mm -hmm. but now people have met each other at the marches, and now they can contact each other more easily, so it's great. Yeah. Really good. And that's what I loved about um, just hearing from Africa. That was one of my favorite, uh, mm -hmm. the marches there only because here in America, you know, it's real selective what you hear on the mainstream media, and it's all how Africa is, you know, embracing genetically engineered crops. And so it was great to see this happening in Africa, all over the world. They had huge turnouts in Africa. It was very inspiring. Yeah, really, really I have awesome. a few. 
I have a few friends who are activists in Africa, and they've gone out of their way to make sure as many people in America know how unwanted the GMOs are there. They're taking over the marketplaces. They're planting in mass fields. They're putting farmers out of work. And so I'm glad. I'm glad that South Africa or Africa had an opportunity to really um, get their voice heard in an, in in a non-traditional or non-mass media way. So I don't know. I mean, were they, were was media covering it in Africa? Do we know? They were in they were in South Africa a lot. I know. Yeah. Well, I know here in Orange County, KCAL 9 News covered the hot dog hooker, but didn't cover the march. I mean, it was just <laughs> appalling. It was just wow. ridiculous. Yeah. So, um, I, so I emailed them, and I emailed the Orange County Register. I was really you know, disappointed the Orange County Register didn't come out, you know, our local newspaper. Um, but we will continue to put the news out there ourselves. You know, here's the thing. We know what's the what the news is, and we have Facebook. What other social media um, ways? What other what other ways do you want to get the word out, Tammy? What other ways do you want us to support um, getting the word out? I know a couple of the people are doing like Rebel Mouse. I'm not I'm not really good with all that stuff. Uh, Tumblr's another way, mm -hmm. but actually, um, March Against Monsanto for this whole week, we're posting all the news outlet. Um, information and we're encouraging people to call them, email them, write them and demand to know why this wasn't covered. I mean this was a worldwide event. This absolutely should have at least gotten, you know, a five minute clip on the news, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. So everybody get the word out. Get familiar with your local reporters. Get familiar with your local TV stations, right? And get the word out. This is this is very important. As Henry Rollins said on our interview with you before that your groups in Europe tend to spend about 70% of their funds on media, right? Because the media yeah, is so important. Absolutely. Always so, between 50 and 70% always goes on media. So. Yeah, and that's just not what happens here in America with our groups that are, you know, promoting certain issues and we need to make sure that even if we don't have the money that we do it anyway. For instance, um, moms across America, we're going cross country to promote our, the event and GMO awareness, our, our marches on July 4th. And when I said we were going to make a documentary about it, I got a, you know, a film producer to contact me and he said, you know, that's going to cost $400,000 and, you know, two years to put it together and edit it and all that. And I said, well, I don't have that money and I don't have that time and this needs to get out now so it's just going to be a handheld video and we're going to video blog and we're going to tell the stories of the moms who ha see in their children the results of GMOs you know we know what scientists say what about what moms are seeing mm -hmm. that's what Australia needs to know that's what New Zealand needs to know before they let GMOs in their country before they lower their bans and the world needs to know what's happening here one out of three kids have allergies autism ADHD, asthma, or autoimmune diseases in America. And one out of three kids is obese here. I mean, this is the future that the rest of the world is facing if they allow GMOs in their country. And we need to let them know. So we're going to do it. We don't, we're not going to have that kind of money. We're just going to do it anyway. And that's what we need to do with the media. We need to get the word out anyway. Yeah, and then the CDC came out with a report that in the last few years, uh, food allergies in children have doubled. Yes. Yeah, they've That's gone up five hundred percent in the past in the past fifteen years. So just doubling in the past in the last year, you said one year, they've doubled. Uh, last couple of years. Oh, yeah. Last couple of years. Yeah. It's it's astronomical now how much has gone up. So okay, so media sites we want to let everybody know, and oh, we want to know a little bit more about you, Tammy, because um, we know I all I do know is that you worked on Prop Thirty Seven a little bit. Were you in L.A. the L.A. area? Is that it? Uh, Rancho Cucamonga. I mean, I I was basically just trying to encourage everybody to vote, like in my small means that I had. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the power of social media <laughs> at the time. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, I wish I could have done more because it was enraging that that didn't pass, and that you know really moved me to do something more. And yeah. I think you know, that's... without Prop Thirty Seven, I don't think we would have Moms Across America. I don't think we would have oh, you know no. March Against Monsanto. So. Yeah. I think I think that it, especially in light of what's been happening with with the um, labeling initiatives, I, I you know I just saw a report from the um, Alliance for Natural Health that 68 labeling initiatives have been attempted in different states, 
and so far we have no traction from them. And it's not that people aren't voting on the issue. It's not that it's an important issue to even some politicians. It's the chips are totally stacked against us. The biotech industry has so much influence over politicians and lobbying and how the laws are structured. It's a massive joke. When you start looking at what's happened in Hawaii and Connecticut, how the bills are getting gutted, how they have a 2050 start date, how now they only apply to fresh fruit and only imported stuff, not local stuff, and all the t and now now we have the King Amendment that will basically make any state labeling efforts unenforceable on a federal level. This is ridiculous. We're just being run over by the biotech industry in the form of our own legislative process. And so that's why I think March Against Monsanto, marches, protesting, rallies, people, uh, the tipping point of consumer rejection, and, and labeling as a means to just educate purely mm -hmm. is so, so vital right now because we our own our own judicial system is just being used yeah the corruption runs very deep it's it's sickening yeah i, I just want to make a comment think, on that labeling which um the coverage here we had uh, two local stations and one did a phenomenal coverage he did a great a great job on the story and um the other station khq here um the reporter actually wrapped up by saying that labeling is a growing concern for these activists and that we're trying to aggressively um, get this on uh, signatures and petitions to get it on the ballot. And it's already on the, going to be on the ballot in November. So we have actually called the local stations prior to this asking to meet with reporters and to discuss with them what's going on. And so he didn't, he's not even aware that this is already going to be on the ballot in Washington State. So <laughs> tells you how much uh, there's a lot of... You know, yeah, the, the labeling, the labeling idea. This was told to me by our media consultants that the labeling idea, the, the media won't really want to cover your stuff until the labeling idea comes out because they want national exposure for your state, and somehow they perceive that idea of labeling as a means to get their stuff on national exposure. You know, in our state, on national exposure, and that's the thing that motivates the media here. So it's not really even a matter of like, can we? help the people out or can we get the message out it's like really they just want to know about labeling a bazillion times I was asked about labeling in Arizona and I had to remind the crowd I'm like listen three attempts have already been made have you met those folks did you send your money to them did you get involved did you volunteer for their campaigns mm -hmm. it's gonna take a massive movement it and it's getting harder and harder every year to push an initiative the laws are being used against the process of filing initiatives to where it costs more money it is an extremely difficult process that you may or may not ever get through in order to file an, an initiative and then just to get through the initiative process I need a quarter of a million signatures a quarter of a million signatures in my state is very difficult people don't go outside here this is the desert this is community gatherings like marches are really hard to come by because it's darn hot here <laughs> yeah. I mean there's and people live here part-time this is a vacation state this is a a place where people go to um, just to get away for a few months and so not everybody's a full-time resident and you know uh, every year they push the Republican Party pushes I should say that uh, but really it is pushed more by the Republican Party um, the idea of making the initiatives harder and harder and in 05 in 2005 um, there was legislation passed in my state that prohibits banning of genetically engineered foods or seeds or any any pesticides on a county city or municipality level so we already have legislation that prohibits us from putting any bans in it's retarded I, I can't even believe I live in America this is just gross misuse of our own legal system so I don't mean to go on and on it's just I and we'll probably take on a labeling initiative here at some point but I, I, I have a feeling we may, we may take on our own labeling initiative with no initiative attached <laughs> yeah and I well, love that you've put dates out for next year Tammy too because that's something that we can you know use in our state to start planning yeah next yeah. next year we want you know 20 million instead of two so that would be great and and not even waiting until then you know doing the the moms across America March and then the October 12th day you said world food day right well and world food day is the 16th so we're oh, gonna do it the Saturday before the Saturday just before. So we can get a better turnout so October great. 12th 
and and I would I would encourage you to you know to get involved with um, these groups that we're, we're we're all planning and putting our heads together you know to be on this call with us if you can on Friday mornings at 9:30 Pacific time, and and to really you know have the people that are on the ground and planning this come together and think about what other ways I mean one thing that I was thinking of is that the people who are supporting these bills their lives are being made easier by Monsanto by them being getting a lot of money well what if we made their lives a little bit more difficult by protesting outside of their homes I mean we have to find out who these people are that are pushing these bills through that are making it impossible for for states like Arizona to even ban or for states to put a proposed labeling I mean we we need to somehow let them know that we're not going to stand this for this anymore yeah call that them now, out you know we we have to let them know I mean just playing nice and being quiet's not working and even getting mad and marching you know millions of us marching they're not covering us in the press so mm -hmm. somehow we've got to get louder I think and I don't know what that way is right now but coming together and brainstorming and thinking about what we can do is is something's got to happen mm -hmm. I don't so. know but I mean uh, for me there's there's uh, one way ahead which is tar just purely targeting supermarkets and rather than rather than anything else because at government level, it's at the moment it's almost impossible. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so re really, the, the the supermarkets are the the mm -hmm. one people uh, everywhere in the world who need targeting by the general public more than anyone else. How how to do it is 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 another matter. You well, know, I um, mean, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a, we went. We did the honking wave. I haven't been able to publish the video yet, mm -hmm. but it was just. I mean. I, and I don't know if other people do this or not, but moms, we went through the grocery stores with signs on our carts and we loaded them up with Fruit Loops and then we got to the checkout counters and we asked them about GMOs and labeling and they said no. So we, you know, we left it all there. We had them put it all back because we're not going to buy GMOs. And if there was some movement like that that happened more often in grocery stores, I think they would think a little bit more about stock, stocking GMOs, you know, in their foods. I think they would think a little bit more about labeling them. Um, so yeah, going after the grocery stores and the moms who buy 85% of the food is really, you know, that's my particular angle because I feel like that's the fastest way that we're going to get GMOs off the grocery stores, off the shelves. Well, the, the New York Times just printed an article yesterday on how there is actually the larger grocery chains and the smaller grocery chains, they're, they're struggling, they're, they're trying to get non-GMO, the demand, they actually feel that from the consumer, they're hearing that. Yeah. Sure. Great. Good. Go ahead, Tammy. Sorry. Um, no, that's okay. We did uh, kind of the same campaign uh, to promote the march. We would encourage the local organizers to go and fill up carts with what they knew to be, you know, toxic food at, um, in, you know, Walmart or whatever, and leave signs and flyers. And I think oh, that man. definitely got a lot of attention. And we also worked. I don't know if I'm going to hold up this label. If you guys can see it. Yep. It, yep. Um, it was called stick it, uh, stick it to the can, and these are basically labels that you can go put on corn or like Chef Boyardee that you know have they're full of toxins, and the barcode will ring up for Roundup if anybody actually gets it up to the checkout stand. Wow. So, yeah, we definitely did a big campaign with these too. So um, there's pictures um, on their website, which is uh, I think it's Franken Food Stock, uh, Franken Farm Labs. So okay. yeah, they were great, and um, yeah. Sorry for interrupting, but I don't know if all of you have uh, seen the Brussels um, soy declaration, which uh, 40, 40 um, large supermarket chains in Europe have signed two weeks ago. She was probably the biggest su success in Europe on GMOs for, for many years, had absolutely no press coverage. Um, oh, wow. What Did happens, not hear a what, word about it. Would love what, to. The, Tell us about the Brussels, it. The Brussels soy declaration was signed by, um, I think it was the top five supermarket chains in Europe and another and another 25 smaller ones and what it what they're asking for is um, a supply of non GMO soy uh, because actually they can't find enough um, non GMO soy uh, for the market demand uh, this this also means that those supermarkets uh, now only want to use non-GMO soy and they've actually signed a declaration saying that they're, they're going to look within the next five years for getting rid of all GMO soy from all of their products which is a, which is an absolutely massive move and mm -hmm. it's without public pressure there was no public pressure on this is purely from 
uh, some MEPs in the European Union Parliament uh, working on it. And that's maybe why it didn't get any press coverage, because there wasn't public pressure on it. Uh, but, but actually, if, if uh, we could target American supermarkets to do exactly the same thing, we could, you know, almost a copy-paste idea, they'd, they'd actually be more attracted, rather than saying ban GMOs or label GMOs, that they have to have enough GMOs, non-GMO soy from Brazil, from Argentina, um, to be produced. So, so, so it's really supporting the actual farmers. That's that's what they're trying to do. So, so they have two markets. There's one one GMO market and one non-GMO market. Right. So, so you're saying it's kind of avoiding the labeling altogether. We were kind of looking at the labeling as, you know, being able to tell the farmer we want and going through the command the demand that way. And you're just saying going through the demand by targeting your grocery store. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Exactly. Okay, and I'd also heard that 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 kind of was a fallacy, though, that there actually was enough non-GMO soy, soy uh, available uh, by there is, Brazil. Yeah, South there America. Is, but, uh, China's China's now doing a deal with Brazil, which means that they're going to uh, be taking most of the non-GMO soy to China, because actually China burned uh, four shiploads of GMO GMO soy from America last week. I uh, I heard about that. In, in the port, and so, so now China is trying to get, trying to get non-GMO soy for the first time, and everyone else will be left with only GMO soy in in most food products. There won't be anywhere else to get. So, whatever happens with GMO labeling or with uh, whatever, uh, there won't be any non-GMO soy. So it's, an, it's you know the 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 circle's gone full circle, and it will just be GMO soy supplied in the world. So it's kind of more more urgent than people know, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've heard that there are more farmers here who will be seeking in this this coming spring, um, 2014, that they will be. There's actually the demand for non-GM is actually going to be greater than than the GM. Yeah, the numbers were in the past years. I think about two years ago, 80% GMO soy and 20% non, you know, conventional. And then now the demand is for 80% non-GMO soy and 20% GM. So there's been a huge shift, but there is there is that supply issue. When we talk to the farmers, you know, after the 2012 the corn report that showed that the corn that was tested in the fields of Iowa had formaldehyde and and uh, glyphosate and was nutritionally bankrupt after that report came out that RT.com covered and all of that, we moms wanted to do a petition to farmers and just say, you know, just please only plant non-GMO corn seed. And our farmer friend told us, you know, that just can't happen right now. It's, it's two years out for the corn seed supply. All of their seed that they have right now is what they have. That's it. And it, they have to order more in the fall, and it's going to be a two-year... Uh, wait for that. So it's very frustrating to us, you know, that this all can't just be done right now, especially in America, because 80 to 90 percent, you know, of our our crops have been uh, infiltrated with GMO, with GMO, you know, seeds. So it's going to take more time for us than in other countries where they have some crops, you know, but they can they can do a labeling or a banning because they don't have as much there. So it's it's a big, huge fight for us in America. Really, really huge can't say it any other way but we're gonna we're not gonna stop we're gonna keep going and we do see that this is possible everybody that we talk to about this just wants to have the choice and they want to have non-gmo you know I was talking to a, a woman in a barbecue the other day and I was telling her about all the health issues and I asked her is it too much you know is this too daunting you know for you all this information she said no this is my kid you're talking about you got to tell me this you know, people want to know, and they're starting to become outraged, you know, like we are with the media right now, outraged that the media is not sharing this. There comes a point when, even as a campaign manager for one of the organizations, you know, in America, where we're either, they're, you know, for state or labeling or for um, one of the initiatives or these groups, the non-GMO groups, where they become careful about the message that we're sending, like, we, oh, we don't want to talk about health too much, or we don't want to talk, you know, we don't get get too controversial. What happens when we do that is that we, in trying to be responsible for the message, we end up being irresponsible about not getting the message out at all. Well, you know? I think part of that, yes, because if if you're not going to talk about the health issues, 
then you're really not talking about all the issues and it puts it back into the court where Monsanto wants it, where it's Monsanto science against activists, which is how they like to portray it, when really it's Monsanto science versus science. And that's where it is. So you've got to pull that, that issue up there. And I kind of want to go back to that issue of, you know, for the CEO, Hugh Grant, you know, social media, it's, it's, it's a, the bane. He hates that. I mean, he can't control the spigot on information that's coming out. And so it's kind of like media versus social media. And you wonder if there's just not more of that, you know, we're not going to let, you know, the mainstream media, we're not going to let them take over, you know, the social media. We're not going to let them take over. Like there's something going on there as well. It's just not what is, is happening. Because how would this have happened without social media? It, it wouldn't it have. Also, it wouldn't think have. about that, how would Monsanto be where they are today, you know, yeah. without the advancement of these Okay. Uh, yeah. Tammy, Tammy, can I ask you a question? Um, how do you think that um, uh, we can connect the general public uh, with the the scientists who are working with us on the on the GM, GMO movement, anti-GMO movement, and also the people who are working uh, with us in governments around the world on the issue? I mean, how how do we connect connect the three? Because they're you see, at the moment, we've got kind of three movements. We've got the scientist groups who are working hard to try and prove that GMOs are dangerous. We've got the people who are working with us in governments and uh, trying to trying to get certain um, schedules of of GMO labeling, etc., through through uh, Senate. And then you, and then you've got the general public, but they're not really connected at the moment. So I think. You know, I think the march actually really did help to connect a lot of the science uh, scientists. Uh, we did have Jeffrey Smith speak. Um, I mean, he's he's more of like a doctor, I guess. But um, you know, he he's a pioneer in the industry, and he's very well respected. And he was very much on board. Um, we also had Dr. McCola um, at the Ormond Beach, Florida um, event, and he reaches quite a few people. And I think it's just gonna it's gonna be a slow process, unfortunately. And I know it's it's urgent, but it is gonna take time. And as far as the government goes, I really liked Zen's idea of, um, you know, showing up at these people's houses, you know, following them to the grocery store, you know. Um, <laughs> I, I really like that idea, you know. Um, but no, I, I mean, it's kind of that's kind of a hard obstacle to really uh, wrap your mind around is how to get it all going. And, you know, that's why I think, you know, we all do need to put our heads together and figure it out. Can I say, I think that um, there was just a, I just got an email, um, and it's been out for quite some time. It's an open letter from the world scientists and all governments about GMOs, and it's through the Institute of Science and Society, and they have over 800 scientists that have signed on to these letters saying we need a moratorium, they're not safe. And the letters have been sent to the World Trade Organization, the UN Biosafety Protocol, the UN Commission on Sustainable Development, the UN Convention, um, and and to the United States Congress. And if you go and you click on this, you'll see every single doctor listed and what their cautions and concerns are. And there are doctors from all around the world, even from Afghanistan, Angola, um, rural uh, Argentina. And some of the highlighted doctors on the list include um, Dr. Seralini, whom we all know, um, Dr. Bellamy, a botanist and broadcaster from London, with Dr. Cox, a geneticist, from the U.S. Department of Agriculture in India. He's retired. We have um, spokespeople from Africa and Ethiopia. We have um, doctors from um, Ruth Hubbard, a geneticist from Harvard. So the list goes on and on. David Suzuki, a geneticist from um, Canada. Dr. Vanavashipa, Shiva, excuse me, from India. So the list goes on and on of the doctors that support the idea of a moratorium on GMOs. That might be a good way to make the rounds, um, but to connect with the scientists, I think Jeffrey Smith, although not being a doctor, I used to work for him. Mm -hmm. I volunteered behind Prop 37 as his co-tour director in California on the Healthier Eating Tour. He, he's not a doctor. I think he'd love the prom promo that you just gave him though. <laughs> um, he's not a doctor but what he does do is he collects all the doctors and he collects the scientists and he just came out with a movie by the same name as his book which is Genetic Roulette mm -hmm. and Genetic Roulette does an excellent job of showcasing what the doctors say about this and it showcases the fact that doctors are saying a non-GMO diet is the way to go. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of professionals that embrace this. The Union of Concerned Scientists is another group that does a very good job. The OCA pulls a lot of people together. 
Mercola, Mercola.com is a great resource as well. Natural News with um, Mike the Health Ranger, I think he does a good job of pulling information together. So there's a lot of different organizations and groups that do um, showcase it, at least in America, but we don't hear much about that happening overseas. The connection between Europe and um, the US in that respect is pretty unestablished or very vague. Um, I would love to see in the US more participation from Greenpeace, especially in the march against Monsanto. Tammy, mm -hmm. did you by chance have um, participation by Greenpeace in, in the organization of the march? I know that we had reached out to them, but I, I do not know if they participated. I know they were um, pretty unwilling to help uh, some of the Canadian organizers, so um, I, I don't know. I don't think so. I never heard anything on my end. So, Did you have any sponsors for any expenses and things like that that you had for the march? Um, no, not really. Uh, th there was a lady uh, that was... Uh, doing our t-shirts and she's at weaddup.com and it's a mother and daughter team that do 100% organic cotton um, and she was kind enough to give some of the contributions uh, from the money that she stole from shirts but for the most part no it was very grassroots wow. and um, you know well great job yeah <laughs> great job with what you did back to kind of a question and a, and, a sh and a shout out to all your graphic designers and videographers that I know put all this together probably for no money and yeah, just generated bono. their time. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes, Andy? Yeah, I was just going to go back to um, what Rachel had said about uh, getting information on, on scientific sources. And I really like GM Watch because I think it's a clear, an international clearinghouse for all the information, everything yeah. that's current. And they highlight a lot of the science. That goes um, that that's current and that's coming out. You know, peer-reviewed journals. And I also feel that um, you know, if the activists, if, if we get strong enough and loud enough, that I think then the demand slowly starts to change. That the science, that these scientists won't be so afraid, maybe, to kind of step out on a limb. I talked to a scientist about two weeks ago, and he said, you know, he goes off the record. He goes, I, you know, he goes, I, I have to worry about a paycheck here. He said, you know, I, I would love to say all these things. He goes, but I have to worry about a paycheck. Yeah. So that's the reality. You know, if you're retired, like Dr. Huber, you know, you can say, you're free to say what you, what you know. <sighs> well, guess what? Moms don't, get, moms don't get a paycheck, and they can't fire us. So we are going to say it, and you know, there, like I said before, there's what the scientists are saying, and then there's what the moms are seeing, and we are seeing our children get better off GMOs. I have pages and pages of responses from our moms survey. Um, Tammy, if you want to direct people to that from, you know, from the March Against Monsanto, we have a mm -hmm. mom survey about the health of your family, and we are going to be putting those, all those quotes on letters to farmers and to grocery store owners and we're going to be letting them know what's happening to the health of our families. And um, because a lot of them don't know it, they really think that the pesticides are the best way to farm and the grocery stores owners really think that that's the, you know, this is healthy food to give, to offer to people. And we're going to let them know what's happening to our families. So um, we need to get the word out there and they can't fire us. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, But I did want to touch on the movie that you mentioned, Rachel, Genetic Roulette. Um, in my call to action, in my speech in Laguna Beach, um, my biggest thing was, listen folks, this has been happening in America and not in 64 other countries around the world because we've been buying it. We have been buying this food. You know, we are responsible for this as well. So what we need to do is not buy it, but in order to not buy it, we need to educate millions of people. We really do need to reach out and empower them. So one idea that I had, we've been kicking around for a couple months now, is to do a, a global GMO movie night. You know, in a couple weeks. That. You know, even just a couple weeks from now. I was hoping before the mar you know, the Moms Across America March, you know, like maybe on June 8th or, or June 15th or something like mm -hmm. that, where all around the world people are watching Genetic Roulette or whatever movie they want, you know, on that weekend, and they're having people over to their homes because what I figured out was that if one person just shares with ten people and those ten share with five people and those five share with five and those with five, now those are conservative numbers. A lot of people will share with 500 people, right? But that one person having those ten people over will be responsible for 1,270 people finding out about GMOs. And Santa, if I like the movie night. 
Yeah, the movie night. And if we do that globally, we could educate 20 million, 30 million in and not. I mean, really, when you when you multiply the numbers out, it's millions and millions of people that we could educate mm -hmm. in a single night. And um, that's the kind of actions that doesn't cost any money. And 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 Monsanto can't stop us. We just keep sharing. Yeah, so, there's, there's movies in every single language yes. in the world. And actually, that was one of the te most touching things that I I, I thought over this uh, the march was Vandana Shiva's, uh, when she talked about the march against Monsanto, mm -hmm. but then there was a request that, you know, volunteers that who would translate, and I think there was like six different languages that were translated, her, her message, I and I thought that was really touching. Happen. It just kind of tells you the, the connection globally. Yeah. Yeah, it's happening, and it just, yeah, it just takes a few, just takes, I don't know, getting the word out there, so mm -hmm. if that's something, Tammy, you want to Support with the oh, with absolutely! Crowd. Oh, it'd be really fantastic to get. I the think that's a out. wonderful idea. That that's a powerful movie, and you know, in all the the press that I did leading up to promote the march, I encourage people. You know, what better birthday gift? You know, Christmas present. Buy people seeds of deception. You know, buy them something that's going to change their lives. Yeah, absolutely. And the world according to Monsanto. Yeah, you know. Rachel, and there's maybe, another one. Dr. Gary Knoll just did um, Seeds of Death, and it's actually yes. free um, on the YouTube that he's allowing people to watch it for free. So yes, we that's can a great that. one. Yeah, yeah, just something that's free. It's absolutely, mm -hmm. that that it will get Thank the word you. out, and maybe we could ask um, Jeffrey Smith to do Genetic Roulette free that night. You know, <laughs> if we can get him on board, that'd be fantastic too. So either Seeds of Death, Genetic Roulette, or The World According to Monsanto. Yep. Rachel's holding up genetic roulette right now. Shameless, Oakland. shameless movie plug here. There we go. Shameless movie you should plug. Hand me mine. Hand me my can I? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> can I? Can I say this much? I am certain that Jeffrey Smith would be very open to the idea of playing it for free. We did behind Prop Thirty Seven in California. We did a. <laughs> I have mine too. <laughs> we did. Um, we did play the movie for free. I, I helped, and and it was one of the most satisfying things. We had to raise twenty two thousand dollars. Oh, wow. in a matter of a couple days in order to play the movie for free because you know the movie was still in production and, and it was it, or had just finished production but it's still being paid for and so there are all kinds of legal issues about giving it away for free completely for free but if we pay the a certain amount of royalties back we we can show it for free online so you know what why don't we decide what night we want it or what day we want it and we go to Jeffrey with a plan and say hey you know what we'd like to have a national free um, genetic rule that movie showing night. I think he'd be all over that. In yeah. fact, I will text him right what now. You, <laughs> what do you think, Tammy? Do you think like two and a half weeks from now, June 8th, or do you think June 15th would be better? I, I'm going to support either one. I do agree that we should do it before the Moms Across America event, though. Yeah, so sat so Saturday, um, so the t-shirts for Moms Across America need to be ordered by the 16th. Okay. So if we if we did it on the fifteenth, people would have to order T-shirts like that. Day, you know, sign up and order T-shirts like that day. Okay. Um, but that is three weeks from now, and it gives people a little bit more time. I don't know. June eighth would be better as far as planning goes. Though. Yeah, a little bit of planning might be nice. A little bit of planning um, to okay. do a free genetic roulette. I love that we're offering this for free. Jeffrey's gonna. <laughs> he's gonna yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, what do you think, Rachel? Should it be the eighth or the fifteenth? I, I think the 8th is a good date, but maybe we should toss that out to Jeffrey. Maybe he okay. has plans already, and we could tap into something <laughs> he's, well, he's already you. doing. You know, that, His mind works. You know, He's going, going all the time, You know, sure. making ideas to prompt the movie and get it out there, because it's an important message for sure. Mm -hmm. awesome. And um, I think he'd be happy to do it. So, yeah, I'll ask him right away. Okay, great. Thanks, Rachel. Appreciate it. Either one, either one works for us. Earlier is always better, but <laughs> either one. All right, fantastic. So what else, um, Tammy? I'm curious, what is your personal background? Like, did you do marketing or anything? No, um, no I actually uh, was a waitress. <laughs> oh, cool. And I was yeah, too. Yeah, I used to be horrified by how badly people would eat. And, um, I mean, shocking. And I, that was really before I really knew what GMO was. And, um, you know, um, I've always been pretty health conscious and, you know, really big into fruits and vegetables and, just learning about GMOs, especially as a mom, you know, just absolutely horrified. But yeah, I was a waitress, and I'm a mom of two little girls. So, yeah, no when I found out you have a six, <laughs> you have a six year old and an eighteen month old, that's yes. a phenomenal. That eighteen month old age is like one of the hardest. 
ages, and you've been taking all this on with a toddler walking around. That's phenomenal. <laughs> thank, thank goodness for my smartphone, because I can watch Barney and you know be texting with the other hand while holding her with the other one. So. <laughs> oh wow! Good for you. All right. Well, what else? Anybody else have any other questions for Tammy? What else? You know, touching on the movie idea, um, it only takes really one person having, you know, a copy of these movies, and they could do screenings in their cities, too. Like, it, it doesn't just have to be, like, one night. You know, um, yeah. my group here in Utah, that's uh, actually what we're really going to focus on is, like, once a month, getting as many people as we can together to, you know, um, screen these movies, because I really think they're eye-opening. Yeah, we had um, Kathleen Halal, my partner in Moms Across America, she just she sponsored Howard Vliger who is a farmer and we have the DVD now from him it's it's really phenomenal information we're gonna put it online for people who make a donation of yeah, I don't know thirty five dollars or something but she hosted this farmer to come do a, a, t a series of, of talks and mm -hmm. she had him do 17 talks in six days so oh, some places five a day and he's talked to PTAs schools libraries moms clubs if you just make an event of it, you know what I mean? You just say, this is the week when I'm going to educate my entire county. Do you know what I mean? She had hundreds of people come out. She just set up all of these, you know, different talks at different schools and um, libraries and restaurants even and things like that. So That's great. That, you know, it just takes, I'm going to do this by when. All it takes is a date. And then you just start getting into action around it. And... Um, that's what's going to transform our food industry. After that, Mother's Market, our local health food store, had to hire three new employees in one week because they had so many people coming in saying, I'm only going to eat organic from now on. So That's great. Yeah. All right. Well, we have some people who need to go. I'm sorry. Andy had to sign off. She said, please help support 522 in Washington. Mm -hmm. If anyone knows anyone out there that can donate some money, the, these movements take a lot of money. <laughs> and we need money for media. We need to get the word out. Thank you very much. Yeah, I twenty I five five two two. 522 Sorry, I-522. It's your choice to label. We want genetically lab genetically modified food labeled, and we want it labeled now. So well, what, is, what is happening in Washington now? Any, sorry for delaying everything, but is there any update? Rachel, anyone? do you want to touch on what's happening in Washington? For some very sad news there, right? Well, I mean, I don't Washington State or Washington D.C. I I don't know which is state, sadder. State. Um, well, mm -hmm. I, I I can't speak for the campaign, but I we did have um we did have their campaign director on um what is it a week ago or two weeks ago, and they said they are making baby steps um to getting oh. the message out. We encouraged her to take the message deeper and to highlight the health effects of GMOs. They really want to emphasize it's your right to know, and they're running their campaign, and 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 nobody's going to tell them how to run their campaign and that's how states work. Um, and I'm just happy that they're running with the labeling campaign. Um, but as far, I, I'm not thrilled about the idea of running with just it's your right to know. I think that's a, a passe message, but that's their choice, and, and they are working really, really hard, and I know that that message does resonate with a lot of people. Um, but we were trying to encourage them to maybe take a more aggressive stance and sort of get the message out about GMOs, the lasting message that doesn't just make people vote, it makes them become activists and it makes them get involved in the movement. So. And didn't, but didn't it just get voted down in the Senate? Yeah, it did, yeah. It just got voted down, so does that mean it's not going to go forward in Congress? It, it can't, right? Oh, I wish Andy was I, on. I don't think it's dead in the water. I think that... No, it's, um, not, it's not. It just got voted on the, on the first vote. Yeah. It's just the first vote. Okay. Okay. Well, it's not a good sign, and definitely the word need, we need to support Washington more with getting the word out, and we will touch touch back on that with Andy on Friday, Pacific time here on the Weekly Women GMO Free News Show. We'll have Andy back on to talk more about that. And um, do you want to, Rachel, want to touch on what's going on in Arizona? Sure. Um, the march was huge for us. Um, there are a lot of groups right now trying to put their uh, brand on a state labeling campaign. 
<laughs> so now all of a sudden it's become cool or like uh, something. And anyway, uh, GMO Free Arizona, of which I'm the founder of, I, we are reluctant to, at this early stage, um, embrace any of the labeling campaigns. We encourage them to take a um, to, to look into it in a more of a national stance and take on some of the international standards. And the groups running with the campaign are um, it's an Occupy group out of Tucson. And I'm not thrilled about it, um, but I want to love anybody who takes this on as their mission. Mm -hmm. um, I could talk more about it, but I think it might break your heart. They refuse to wait and do a simultaneous initiative, which is mm -hmm. kind of sad, but they want to do it their way. And so I would just encourage those that want to take on labeling initiatives to find the other groups in your state. We've worked really hard over the last three months to coordinate all the groups in the state, get them on the same page. So that way when we do take on a labeling initiative in our state, we're well organized and it's well connected and everyone's well informed. Occupy, as you know, runs, the, runs their ship the way they run their ship and um, it doesn't seem to work for a lot of the other groups here, including mine. So. Sad to say, that's what it is right now. I will tell you, though, that, that it's something that we're looking at the very near future. And we can't ignore it. The people at the March all want it. Everyone wants it. Yeah. It's just a matter yeah. of getting um, some financial support, some backing at our state legislature, which we're working on, and we have, um, mm -hmm. and to get, the, get some more awareness and to build our army before we start out on a crusade. So. Tammy, thank you very much, Rachel. Tammy, did you have Occupy working with you on March Against Monsanto? Uh, yeah, they were actually one of the bigger groups that did help. I know in Tampa, um, it was Occupy Tampa that uh, did that, and in a few other states, yes. Um, we didn't really have any problems with them. Um, I know that, that there are problems related to the organization, but they were great as far as our march went. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, that's what makes it successful is when we all work together. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I know like it's... To, sorry for yeah. interrupting, but I'd just like to point mm -hmm. out that it's, it's, it is all possible. Uh, yes. I'm now in uh, because I'm in Bulgaria. Now this is only this is one of the only countries in the world which is completely GMO free. Wow. Um, so we don't we, we don't need GMO labeling because we haven't got any GMO products. And, oh, that's uh, so cool. That's that's all happened uh, because of bees. Uh, that's the the only reason that, that they've been allowed to because we're in the EU, uh, but we're one of the only countries in the EU which is GMO free because. Uh, all the beekeepers um, have to have 300 kilometers around them of GMO free. Um, that's that's actually in the the law of the constitution in the country. Wow, so, that's awesome. So, so which means that it's actually going to be impossible to grow any GMOs here until 2030. So it is possible. Mm -hmm. I'm just shouting from over here. It is possible. Mm -hmm. Thank By you then so the world much. will be eradicated of them, so no worries. <laughs> <laughs> so that's another group that we need to look on getting on board as beekeepers in a big oh, way. And one idea was to have them at the, have the kids at the Fourth of July parades dress up in bee costumes. You know, just get them some little bee T-shirts and wings or something, and get the word out there because mm -hmm. we've lost fifty percent of our bees in the United States. That is tragic. I mean, without the bees, we've got maybe four years left as a human race. So it's, it's that's what Einstein important. said. What's that? That's what Einstein said. Yes, exactly that's what that. Einstein said. Yep. Uh -huh. So um, yeah, all right. Well, any other news, uh, Henry, from Sustainable Pulse and GM Watch and GMO Seralini? I want to let you know that without your news coverage, like I know the news that you put out, you have gone through everything with a fine-tuned comb and you're putting out the most important so I really appreciate it as a mom I don't have time to blog everything all the new news <laughs> and um, when I really look forward to your emails and newsletters so is there any other news that you want to update us on no other news but, but over the next month there are some very very exciting things gonna happen just to warn everyone okay well, we're more, waiting even more exciting than, than uh, the studies from last year really Wow. Yeah. all so, right so next month when I come back on this, I'll tell you more. Okay. All right. So Tammy's got to go. The baby's crying. Tammy, what else Bye. do you want to say to everybody? <laughs> Anything else? Uh, just sign up and uh, support Moms Across America. I mean, we all need to really stand together and all the various, you know, uh, marches and events that we have going on within our own personal organizations. We really need to support each other if we're going to make any kind of real change. 
Great. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tammy, for your huge contribution to the world. Yeah, thank you, thank you so much, Tammy. Yes, Brilliant. thank you, Tammy. Thank hey, thank Tammy, you. how about a picnic? How about a picnic between marches? Yeah, yeah. that would be good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you go free there picnics. There you go. I love that idea. Great. Yeah, oh, we'll all have to right, put guys. our heads together. Thank you guys for having me on. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Thank you thank so you. much. Thanks, Tammy. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Up in a closet today, <laughs> Grand Central Station at my house. All right, <laughs> welcome everybody. We are on the weekly Women GMO Free News Show. It is Memorial Day on a Monday. This is a very special broadcast coming to you from all across America and all around the world. We have some special guests today. Our guest of honor is Tammy Canal Monroe. Wave to everybody, Tammy. Hi. <laughs> yeah, she is the creator and originator of the March Against Monsanto. It has been a historic, thrilling, fantastic, amazing, phenomenal uh, weekend. Saturday, March Against Monsanto had, why don't you tell us how many cities and how many marchers, Tammy? Uh, we had 52 countries participate with uh, 436 cities and over 2 million people. It's incredible. Wow! Woo! Can somebody do applause <laughs> effects here? Yeah! <laughs> Fantastic! And we have some other. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, we're so thrilled! This is really a phenomenal, phenomenal event that happened. I know ours was phenomenal. We have some other very special. We have another very special guest, Henry Rollins. Please wave to everybody and say hello. Where are you coming to us from? No sound. <coughs> no, not yet. Now there should be sound. From the middle of there Bulgaria. Hello, everyone. Oh, from Bulgaria. Thank you, Henry, for being in our time zone. We appreciate that. What time is it there? No problem at all. It's about 8 o'clock 8 o'clock at night. Okay. All right. Okay, great. And, and Andy, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm one of our hosts. I'm Rastad. I'm from Eastern Washington. And Tammy, I am so happy to talk to you today. Uh, we had a great march here. They expected, we expected about 200 and over 700 showed. Yay! Awesome! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there were a lot of people from out of town who signed up. So but I think the word kind of just went like wildfire at the, la you know, the last couple days. Word was really getting out. Yeah, we had a lot of criticism at first because we did do a Memorial Day, but our whole thinking behind that was if you're not able to make it in your town, hopefully there would be so many of them that you'd be able to do, you know, a destination somewhere. So Actually, it worked out well. It happened. Yeah, we yes. had quite a few people that were from out of town that were visiting that came. They said we weren't going to miss us for anything, and they were so happy there was one in Spokane. A lot of people who had actually delayed their trip, their weekend plans, by one day just so that they could participate in the march. And the two co the two co leaders here were um, John Crowfoot and mm -hmm. Jace Defati, and they did a super job, just a great job. It, we it had was, a really we had a great team just across the board. All the organizers really stepped up, and a lot of them have that was their first time ever organizing anything. Yes, and everyone mm -hmm. did amazing. Fantastic. Okay, so Rachel from Arizona. Yeah. Okay. So Arizona, our march was huge. We had no idea what to expect because um, Phoenix is, I would say marches are probably not something that you would have expected um, to have happen here. And I thought maybe we'd have a few hundred people. And we had about a thousand people on the march and about 2,000 people at the rally. And so for us, this was a huge public statement and probably one of the first and biggest statements in our state. So we were super excited to come on board and help the organizers out with the event and um, thank you so much because I think you're propelling the movement in our state for sure with the March Against Monsanto. In a huge thank way and we saw that Arizona Tucson got, um, got news coverage too. We saw you in the newspaper. Yeah, yeah, and we're working on a few other news pieces that um, we weren't able to acquire that um, happened and, and went li were live and so we're trying to track down those folks to um, post it up as soon as we can. But yeah, we, we did get press coverage. Um, even though there were um, fake uh, fake press releases that had the wrong time and all oh, kinds wow. of, yeah, wow. it was really funny in our town what happened. Wow. So, but irrespective, it still, it still went off amazingly well and we still had press coverage, so yeah. 
Fantastic. And I was in Laguna Beach here in Orange County, and we had for sure at least 600 marchers, but for Moms Across America, we passed out flyers for the you know upcoming event, and we passed out 1,000 flyers, no problem. So we know there are a lot of people there, and the word is getting out. We It was just, we were coming down the street and approaching the, the beach, and the whole front of the beach was just covered with people. I just wanted to cry. It was so beautiful. I because did cry. Working, I lost yeah, it. <laughs> it was so beautiful. You know, because working on Prop 37, we would go out to honking waves, and there'd be maybe 20 people there. And to finally see, you know, 600 people and just to be marching and chanting with people from all different races and backgrounds and ages and shapes and sizes and ages and everything. It was just so empowering and so exciting. And people just didn't want to stop, you know. Even during the speeches, they were just like, no, we got to get people to honk and wave, you know. So there were a lot of people that were by the road and getting people to honk and wave and rallying. It was just, it was so thrilling. We really thank you, Tammy, for all of your late night efforts for all of your time on Facebook and computers and figuring things out that you've never figured out before and working with people from all across the country and we really also want to thank your husband and your family for their generosity in sharing you and your time. So oh, will you so sweet. Will you please give them all a hug from us and yes. thank them from the bottom of our hearts for their generosity in sharing you with us. And I just want to say this was very much a collective effort. I could not have done this myself and, you know, from the international organizers I had helping me to, you know, the local organizers in the smallest towns. I mean, it was definitely because we, our own our own judicial system is just being used. Yeah. The corruption <laughs> runs very deep. It's it's sickening. Yeah, I, I just want to make a comment think, on the labeling, which um, the coverage here, we had uh, two local stations, and one did a phenomenal coverage. He did a great a great job on the story. And um, the other station, KHQ here, um, the reporter actually wrapped up by saying that labeling is a growing concern for these activists and that we're trying to aggressively um, get this on uh, signatures and petitions to get it on the ballot. And it's already on the going to be on the ballot in November. So we have actually called the local stations prior to this, asking to meet with reporters and to discuss with them what's going on. And so he didn't he was not even aware that this is already going to be on the ballot in Washington State. So <laughs> tells you how much uh, there's a lot of you know disconnect. Yeah, the, media. the labeling the labeling idea. This was told to me by our media consultants that the labeling idea the, the media won't really want to cover your stuff until the labeling idea comes out because they want national exposure for your state and somehow they perceive that idea of labeling as a means to get their stuff on national exposure. You know, in our state, a national exposure, and that's the thing that motivates the media here. So it's not really even a matter of like, can we? help the people out or can we get the message out it's like really they just want to know about labeling a bazillion times I was asked about labeling in Arizona and I had to remind the crowd I'm like listen three attempts have already been made have you met those folks did you send your money to them did you get involved did you volunteer for their campaigns mm -hmm. it's gonna take a massive movement it and it's getting harder and harder every year to push an initiative the laws are being used against the process of filing initiatives to where it costs more money it is an extremely difficult process that you may or may not ever get through in order to file an, an initiative and then just to get through the initiative process I need a quarter of a million signatures a quarter of a million signatures in my state is very difficult people don't go outside here this is the desert this is community gatherings like marches are really hard to come by because it's darn hot here <laughs> yeah. I mean there's and people live here part-time this is a vacation state this is a a place where people go to um, just to get away for a few months and so not everybody's a full-time resident and you know uh, every year they push the Republican Party pushes I should say that uh, but really it is pushed more by the Republican Party um, the idea of making the initiatives harder and harder and in 05 in 2005 um, there was legislation passed in my state that prohibits banning of genetically engineered foods or seeds or any any pesticides on a county city or municipality level so we already have legislation that prohibits us from putting any bans in it's retarded I, I can't even believe I live in America this is just gross misuse of our own legal system 
so I don't mean to go on and on. It's just I and we'll probably take on the labeling initiative here at some point. But I I I have a feeling we may we may take on our own labeling initiative with no initiative attached. <laughs> yeah. And I well, love that you've put dates out for next year, Tammy, too, because that's something that we can, you know, use in our state to start planning. Yeah. Next yeah. next year we want, you know, twenty million instead of two. So that would be great. And and not even waiting until then, you know, doing the, the Moms Across America March and then the October twelfth day, you said World Food Day, right? Well, and World Food Day is the 16th, so we're going to do it the Saturday before, the Saturday just before. so we can get a better turnout, so October Great. 12th. And, and I, would, I would encourage you to, you know, to get involved with um, these groups that we're, we're, we're all planning and putting our heads together, you know, to be on this call with us if you can on Friday mornings at 9.30 Pacific Time, and, and to really, you know, have the people that are on the ground and planning this come together and think about what other ways. I mean, one thing that I was thinking of is that the people who are supporting these bills, their lives are being made easier by Monsanto, by them being getting a lot of money. Well, what if we made their lives a little bit more difficult by protesting outside of their homes? I mean, we have to find out who these people are that are pushing these bills through that are making it impossible for, for states like Arizona to even ban or for states to put a proposed labeling. I mean, we, we need to somehow let them know that we're not going to stand this for this anymore. Yeah, call that them now, out. You know, we, we have to let them know. I mean, just playing nice and being quiet's not working and even getting mad and marching, you know, millions of us marching, they're not covering us in the press. So mm -hmm. somehow we've got to get louder, I think. And I don't know what that way is right now, but coming together and brainstorming and thinking about what we can do is, is something's got to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't so. know, but I mean, uh, for me, there's, there's uh, one way ahead, which is tar just purely targeting supermarkets and rather than, rather than anything else, because at government level, it's at the moment it's almost impossible. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so re really, the, the the supermarkets are the the mm -hmm. one people uh, everywhere in the world who need targeting by the general public more than anyone else. How how to do it is 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 another matter. You well, know, I, I mean, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a, we went. We did the honking wave. I haven't been able to publish the video yet, mm -hmm. but it was just. I mean. I, and I don't know if other people do this or not, but moms, we went through the grocery stores with signs on our carts and we loaded them up with Fruit Loops and then we got to the checkout counters and we asked them about GMOs and labeling and they said no. So we, you know, we left it all there. We had them put it all back because we're not going to buy GMOs. And if there was some movement like that that happened more often in grocery stores, I think they would think a little bit more about stock, stocking GMOs, you know, in their foods. I think they would think a little bit more about labeling them. Um, so yeah, going after the grocery stores and the moms who buy 85% of the food is really, you know, that's my particular angle because I feel like that's the fastest way that we're going to... Definitely a very, very much a group effort, so I can't take all the credit, so... Sure. And I want to well, say, say thank you too for making it, come on in here, this is my youngest daughter, Sydney, for making it a family-friendly event. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and for, for keeping the vibe very peaceful and mellow, we so appreciate that. And um, even though there were people from all sides of the conversation coming in, I mean, we had the Young Occupy folks, the Anarchy folks, the Agenda 21 folks, we had the, you know, the moms groups, and it just, even though it had all of those different voices, it still remained extremely peaceful and extremely well um, organized and and it was great for even the smallest of children. So thank you. It was. Yeah. That was our attention. And it that was, was also, really it was great. Also, it was also massive in Europe. I know um, yes. the one of our neighbors in in uh, in Vienna in Austria. There was a huge march. I think one of the biggest in the world. I'm not quite sure. Um, he, uh, the leader there actually was one of our international organizers, and he was really uh, instrumental in the global success. His name is Clemens Partisan, and he's actually with um, like a digital anarchy group. And we also got a lot of flack for working with anarchists, but you know, they they promised to remain peaceful, and I didn't want to be um, exclusive because I really feel this is such an issue that affects everyone, and I think that's kind of the beauty behind the success is because we did welcome everyone from all walks of life. We didn't care about your political background. We didn't, you know, we didn't care about your religion, your ethnicity. If you were willing to stand up for a cause that's important to every single one of us, we welcomed you. Fantastic. Great. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of the other team members that helped you organize the march? 
Uh, yeah, uh, Clemens and his group was definitely, like I said, instrumental in the you know European um, success. And then I was also working with Emily Renzik, who is um, a freelance um, journalist out of Seattle, and then Nick Burnaby, who is um, an activist in San Diego. And we were pretty much the core group that um, made it happen. <laughs> Wow, yeah, just the, the power of the few, right? Mm -hmm. It just becomes the mighty. Yes. Really, really amazing. And hats off to all of you. for I know you stayed up late nights and yeah. worked really hard on this. Thank you for all your efforts. So how do you feel now? I mean, did, did this, was this just beyond your wildest imagination? Absolutely. Um, when I created the page, I told my husband, if I could get 3,000 people, I will consider that a success. And that was kind of my number. And yeah. I mean, it just exploded, and it's so inspiring to see all these people that care, you know, because it, it is truly the issue of our time. And were you thinking at the time 3,000 people um, locally, like nationally, or were you thinking globally? Like nationally, and I'm new to Utah, so I didn't really know how the activist scene worked out here, and I honestly thought I would probably be standing on my, my capital with you know, maybe my daughter and, uh, you know, a couple other people. And we had actually over 2,000 people here in my, my town. So it was, yeah, it was incredible. Our march spanned six city blocks. It was, it was incredible. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's so great. So, um, okay, so let's see. So you just told us what you did on Saturday. That sounds fantastic. So what were some of the highlights for you around the world? What were some of your favorite you know, um, Amsterdam, they look like they had probably 10,000 people in the pictures I've seen. Um, oh, wow. the, the South African groups were wonderful. You know, they came out in, you know, their traditional costumes. And just seeing everybody kind of put their own flair on it was just remarkable. The, the Hawaiian events were beautiful. Um, I mean, I don't really have a favorite. I, I, just looking through all the photos, I, I'm just so proud of, you know, the work that I've done and that everybody did. And... And the fact that it remained peaceful is something definitely to commend when you have that many people. So, Yeah, it's fantastic. I loved how creative people got. I saw the one where they did the bee die-in. I was loved that. that was, uh, they did one in Milwaukee, and then they did one um, in D.C. in front of Monsanto headquarters, which is priceless. Wow. <laughs> so great. They were just to see grown men walking around in giant bee costumes <laughs> was so fun. You know, my kids, we were watching that. We got onto, um, we put our flat screen, we put YouTube up on our flat screen, you know, in our, in our home. So we could go through the computer and YouTube on, the, on our TV. And the kids were just watching and saying, like, there's a guy in a bee costume. <laughs> but they know why, you know, they know why. And we were all, you know, together on this weekend, our whole family and friends. And I was seeing people from different walks of life that I didn't know cared about this, you know, mm -hmm. at Laguna Beach coming up and hugging each other. And I posted one of the pictures of one of our organizers hugging somebody else and saying, you know, this is the kind of connection and unity that is coming out of this movement so Monsanto doesn't know it, but in a way we really have to thank them for bringing together yeah. just people from all around the world in unity and strength and empowerment. It's just such a beautiful thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. many so many events in our town are going to be spawned from this. So you've you ignited something, you know. Yeah, um, Tammy. So thank you for that. And I'll tell you, we're already planning next year, even bigger. Uh, we've we've blow, we blew out the venue we had this time around with ten days' notice. Awesome. And yeah, and I I can't even imagine what next year is going to be like. I think we'll have to expand it to multiple cities within, uh, or multiple areas within the city in order to be able to maintain. But we we had veterans from. Um, Veterans for Peace come out and talk about um, how GMOs have, or how uh, Agent Orange has in fact uh, affected the veterans, mm -hmm. and I thought that was kind of a nice touch for um, our our Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And we had folks from the um, the Indian reservations and from the Indigenous peoples communities come out and talk about how this has impacted them and how they feel they've been targeted. And we had um, moms groups come out. We had people from vegetarian groups and vegan groups. We had people who had concerns about animals and pets and the environment. It really was a great way to congeal a lot of different aspects of this uh, movement into one great rally. So thank you. Yeah, I think that um, it'll be even bigger to do it again next year. A lot of people felt like we didn't know about this. I, we didn't know about this. We would have joined if we had known. Yeah. So it's definitely adds added some momentum 
to well, this. Well, we already have May 24th on the books for next year. So, um, But I also um, am trying to get everybody to rally again um, around October 12th, which is um, a few days before World Food Day. It happens to fall on a Saturday. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. World Food Day falls on a Wednesday, so we want to do it on a Saturday because that seems universally a really good day for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, and sorry, what was your date? Um, October 12th. And October, October is, and October is also GMO um, Awareness Month, which I'm sure you all know. So I feel like that would be really poetic to do another big event. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, uh, Dan has mar ma the March. When is your March? So July 4th. Zen. Yes. Yes, July 4th. All, all across America. And, you know, some people have said, oh, maybe we'll do something in Australia, maybe Canada. So who knows if they would like to, you know, March in Solidarity Moms, that would be fantastic. And we're just joining into Fourth of July parades. And many of them, you don't need applications. You just show up. And so it's very easy. All the permits, the porta potties the police, they're already taken care of. You know, you just get a, get a Moms Across America t-shirt, grab some balloons, your kids, a tricycle and get out there and we're gonna have flyers I'm getting them made up now um, they, the, some, the, the parades may have to chip in for the flyers we, it just depends on how many parades we have we only have a certain amount of funds that we've raised so far but um, we're gonna be getting out flyers to thousands of people locally about GMOs what is a GMO why should I care about it we're gonna have quotes from moms about how their kids have gotten better going GMO free and then on the back side of the flyer we're gonna have GMO free solutions so body care and um, you know products are mom approved favorite products and so we're gonna make it easier for you to go GMO free and we're gonna get the information out to thousands locally and millions nationally and maybe even globally so we're very excited about that this this morning I woke up to three pages of RSVPs so Yay. it's happening it's moving it's thank you so much Tammy for rallying the March Against Monsanto people it's very exciting we got to stick together. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So what else? So let's see. What other questions? If somebody else has any questions, please let me know. I'd just, but I have... I'd just like to to um, hear about the media coverage because it was really interesting. Lots of mm. lots of media that hasn't actually picked up a lot of stories about GMOs in the past actually picked up on this more than anything else, and especially especially Russia Today's coverage, which was yeah. massive all over the world. Um, they they've been wonderful. Oh, they've been, they've been wonderful for years, but but um, I, I wondered if you'd actually done any personal interviews with them at all because they're they're a great bunch, and they they uh, had it on. I think they had it on twenty four seven, didn't they? The whole the whole month. <laughs> they did, they did. They were like streaming live. It was crazy. Um, I personally didn't do an interview with them, but um, Nick Burnaby, the San Diego based guy, he actually went on and did uh, two different ones. Um, so that was great. And um, as far as mainstream media, no, they're pretty much ignoring us, which is kind of shocking. Like over here in the States, like CNN, Fox News, I mean, we haven't even had a mention across the ticker tape. So um, that's fine. You know, a lot of local media did show up, although there were some events that didn't have a single reporter, which is just, I mean, it kind of shows you the state of the country when they'd rather report about Jody Arias than anything significant going on. So. I actually, I actually rang up the the BBC in London to one journalist I know there, and uh, they'd they'd apparently been stopped from reporting on it. So there's really, there's also some really, from, mm -hmm. there was there was no coverage on the BBC at all, which is uh, quite incredible. Oh, it's shocking. It is yeah, shocking I, for an event this large and international on any other subject. That is absolutely that is a shocking. Well, and if it hadn't remained peaceful, they would have been covering it. If there was oh. rioting or violence, they would have been all over it, shedding all the negative light that they could have on it. So, yeah. yeah. And I have to tell you, the camera people um, that we got out were all over this issue. They found it super important, and the I will say some of the anchors didn't even know what we were talking about, and they really came out trying to do the angle on the, making it a fringe movement. And when we saw what was going on, we had some people jump in and put some of the speakers on as as um, doing the interviews, which was so genius because really they were there to show the kind of like anarchist side of it, which is cool, but the rest of the world might look at that in a way that's not very flattering for an intelligent movement that really wants to seek healthy alternatives for people. So. So, um, yeah, it was interesting. We also were told, like, listen, keep your press releases down to one page. Uh, make sure you have a contact person on your press release on the top of the page. 
Make sure you're very clear and succinct about where you are, when you are. And when you send your press releases out, you have to follow them up with phone calls. And even with all of that, we did only receive a small amount of media coverage. And, um, but we were glad to have it, and it was just local coverage. I think, so for I think next year, we've got a whole plan. We've got a whole plan coming out. But yeah, they, they can't ignore it. But follow the money trail. I mean, when you look at the sponsors, it's even for BBC World News, which comes on, they're, they're touting uh, genetic engineering of sugarcane for ethanol production. Sure, That's sure. the Shell Gasoline's their sponsor, you know. BASF. What can we do? I think, I think the most important thing about the whole march was it, it's now turned everything into a worldwide movement instead of yes. lots of little groups. Because... Yep. Uh, for the last 10 years, we've been working as little groups fighting little battles, but now now people are starting to contact each other, and not just through the march. I mean, the march the march has joined people together, but, but now people have met each other at the marches, and now they can contact each other more easily, so it's great. Really yeah. good. And that's what I loved about um, just hearing from Africa. That was one of my favorite, uh, mm -hmm. the marches there only because here in America, you know, it's real selective what you hear on the mainstream media, and it's all how Africa is, you know, embracing genetically engineered crops. And so it was great to see this happening in Africa, all over the world. They had huge turnouts in Africa. It was very inspiring. Yeah, really, I really have a awesome. few. I have a few friends who are activists in Africa and they've gone out of their way to make sure as many people in America know how unwanted the GMOs are there. They're taking over the marketplaces, they're planting in mass fields, they're putting farmers out of work and so I'm glad, I'm glad that South Africa or Africa had an opportunity to really um, get their voice heard in, an, in, in a non-traditional or non-mass media way. So. I don't know. I mean, were, they, were was media covering it in Africa? Do we know? They were in they were in South Africa a lot. I know. Yeah. Well, I know here in Orange County, KCAL Nine News covered the hot dog hooker, but didn't cover the march. I mean, it was just <laughs> appalling. It was just wow. ridiculous. Yeah. So. Um, I, so I emailed them and I emailed the Orange County Register. I was really, you know, disappointed the Orange County Register didn't come out. You know, our local newspaper. Um, but we will continue to put the news out there ourselves. You know, here's the thing: we know what's the what the news is, and we have Facebook. What other social media um, ways? What other what other ways do you want to get the word out, Tammy? What other ways do you want us to support um. getting the word out? I know a couple of the people are doing like Rebel Mouse. I'm not. I'm not really good with all that stuff. Uh, Tumblr is another way. Mm -hmm. But actually, um, March Against Monsanto for this whole week, we're posting all the news outlet um, information, and we're encouraging people to call them, email them, write them, and demand to know why this wasn't covered. The, I mean, this was a worldwide event. This absolutely should have at least gotten you know a five minute clip on the news. You know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so everybody, get the word out. Get familiar with your local reporters. Get familiar with your local TV stations, right? And get the word out. This is this is very important. As Henry Rollins said on our interview with you before, that your groups in Europe tend to spend about 70% of their funds on media, right? Because the media absolutely, is so important. Absolutely. Always so, between 50 and 70% always goes on media. So. Yeah, and that's just not what happens here in America with our groups that are, you know, promoting certain issues. And we need to make sure that even if we don't have the money, that we do it anyway. For instance, um, moms across America, we're going cross country to promote our, the event and GMO awareness, our, our marches on July 4th. And when I said we were going to make a documentary about it, I got a, you know, a film producer to contact me and he said, you know, that's going to cost $400,000 and, you know, two years to put it together and edit it and all that. And I said, well, I don't have that money and I don't have that time and this needs to get out now. So it's just going to be a handheld video and we're going to video blog and we're going to tell the stories of the moms who see in their children the results of GMOs. You know, we know what scientists say. What about what moms are seeing? Mm -hmm. That's what Australia needs to know. That's what New Zealand needs to know before they let GMOs in their country, before they lower their bans. And the world needs to know what's happening here. One out of three kids have allergies, autism, ADHD, asthma, or autoimmune diseases in America. And one out of three kids is obese here. 
I mean, this is the future that the rest of the world is facing if they allow GMOs in their country, and we need to let them know. So we're going to do it. We don't. We're not going to have that kind of money. We're just going to do it anyway, and that's what we need to do with the media. We need to get the word out anyway. Yeah, and then the CDC came out with a report that in the last few years, uh, food allergies in children have doubled. Yes, yeah, they've that's gone up five hundred percent in the past in the past fifteen years. So just doubling in the past in the last year, you said one year, they've doubled. Uh, last couple of years, oh, yeah. Last couple of years, yeah. It's it's astronomical now how much has gone up. So okay, so media sites, we want to let everybody know. And oh, we want to know a little bit more about you, Tammy, because um, we know I all I do know is that you worked on Prop 37 a little bit. Were you in LA, the LA area? Is that it? Uh, Rancho Cucamonga. I mean, I I was basically just trying to encourage everybody to vote, like in my small means that I had. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize the power of social media <laughs> at the time. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, I wish I could have done more because it was enraging that that didn't pass, and that you know really moved me to do something more. And yeah. I think you know, that's... without Prop Thirty Seven, I don't think we would have Moms Across America. I don't think we would have oh, you know no. March Against Monsanto. So yeah. I think I... I think that it, especially in light of what's been happening with with the um, labeling initiatives. I, I, you know, I just saw a report from the um, Alliance for Natural Health that 68 labeling initiatives have been attempted in different states, and so far we have no traction from them. And it's not that people aren't voting on the issue. It's not that it's an important issue to even some politicians. It's the chips are totally stacked against us. The biotech industry has so much influence over politicians and lobbying and how the laws are structured. It's a massive joke. When you start looking at what's happened in Hawaii and Connecticut, how the bills are getting gutted, how they have a 2050 start date, how now they only apply to fresh fruit and only imported stuff, not local stuff, and all the t and now now we have the King Amendment that will basically make any state labeling efforts unenforceable on a federal level. This is ridiculous. We're just being run over by the biotech industry in the form of our own legislative process. And so that's why I think March Against Monsanto, marches, protesting, rallies, people, uh, the tipping point of consumer rejection, and, and labeling as a means to just educate purely mm -hmm. is so, so vital right now.